Tanya with the Head Hen Channel and today I'm going over two things. First of all, I'm going over a bunch of chicken products that you use in a chick brooder and I also want to go over some chick brooder options and my very favorite chick brooder that I absolutely love. It can be very overwhelming with all the chick products out there. This video will help you narrow it down and be successful with your chicks. Okay, the very first thing we're going to start with is your heating element for your brooder. And this is the most popular thing that is used. They can be very dangerous because first of all, you can overheat your chickens. You definitely need to have one of these thermometers and you need to lay the uh, thermometer flat on the ground under the lamp so you can see how hot that it is in there. You want to practice before you get the chicks and determine how high up you need to mount the light to uh, make sure that it's um, right at the right temperature. So at first, when a chick is like seven days old or younger, you wanna keep the brooder about 95 degrees. And then each week, you're gonna decline by five degrees until they're old enough to go outside. So the other option and is the bomb, and that is the Brenzia Echo Glow Heater. This thing is amazing. So this is just like a mama bird. So in nature, when you see a hen have chicks, the chicks are not under the heat all the time. They scamper under and get under their mom and then that's how they get their heat is when they're underneath their mom. So this works kind of like a mama hen. You don't have to stress about maintaining a certain temperature in your brooder. You just kind of put that in there and the chicks get under it. You do have, want to have it at the right height, but they get under it when they need it. But this is about 80 bucks, but it's well worth it if you're going to have chicks to invest in one of these heaters, you'll absolutely love it. Now let's talk about some feeders. So these are a couple of models that I've used. This is called the Little Giant Feeder and it's about $7 at Tractor Supply. It's plastic, but it has lots of openings. One little trick that I'll give you that I do, because your brooder's generally gonna have pine shavings in the bottom of your brooder, is I put little um, blocks of wood underneath my feeders to elevate it off the ground just a little bit. And the reason you do this is because the chicks, they start kicking up and scratching uh, the material in their brooder at a very young age and they fling the uh, pine shavings inside and then they pretty much cover up their food if you don't elevate it up a little bit. So I like to elevate mine up. There's also this model, which is really very similar. It's about the same price, about $7. You put, you fill this up with the food and screw this on and it's kind of like uh, it refills itself. Next up is waters. There are so many options with waters. The water feeders need to be elevated up or the pine shavings are gonna get stuck in here and they can fill all the way around the rim. I'm sure you've seen it at Tractor Supply or somewhere else when it's down low. The pine shavings get so packed in there that the chicks can't, don't even have anything to drink. This last time that I did chicks, I used these nipple drinkers. These are about $6 a piece, they're, they're one liter. One liter was not big enough, so I got two. I still had to fill them daily for my eight chicks that I got. But this is the cleanest way uh, for the chicks to get their water. So they just tap it, it takes them about five seconds to figure it out. Um, they tap it with their beaks and the water drifts down and this is something that has to be up high So I actually stacked several blocks of wood. I also mounted One of these nipple drinkers on top of the Brinzia heater. So it was kind of like the perfect little um, height this was lower uh, at first and sometimes if it wasn't tall enough, I would put a little block of wood like that and they'd hop up on the block of wood and then tap here. You can also put this up on a block. It is a cup drinker. This is by Rent-A-Coupe. Most of these also come with mounting brackets to where if you are using a cage type of a thing for your brooder, you can actually mount this onto the cage and you can adjust the height uh, based on how you mount it. But this is actually pretty clean. It's definitely cleaner than this option. This works pretty well, but definitely my top pick for chicks would be this nipple drinker right here. So now that you have the supplies, 
let's talk about brooder options. When it comes to selecting a brooder, it's really a personal choice. I've even heard of people putting chicks in their bathtub, and certainly a lot of people have put chicks in a Tupperware container like this. Keep in mind for the first one to three weeks, you'll need at least one square foot per chick in the brooder. As they get older, they need at least two square feet per chick. They get big and active very quickly, and it's at least six to eight weeks before they are fully feathered and ready for the coop. I have used a stock tank. The ones that you see at Tractor Supply were that the chicks are in, but double the size, and that was a really nice size for 10 chicks. But they started to get really active, they started to get big, and they were too cramped, and there was some feather picking behavior, which is what happens when you have too many chicks in a small space. So what I did is I took half the chicks out and I put them into another space. So when I had to move them to the coop, I had to introduce them to each other so that they wouldn't start fighting and all that. So if you can, it's best to keep them all together. So this is a puppy playpen. I learned about this idea on the Chicken Chick. Check her out, she's amazing. This runs about $80. This is the extra large pen. I just got it on Amazon, but I know Chewy has some as well. What I liked about this is how big it was and also how many access points that it has and also that it's mesh on the side. There were so many benefits to that. Because it was mesh, the chicks got really used to seeing humans walk around them. They weren't startled as easily as I've seen my past chicks uh, be startled when people would uh, come around them. And in addition to coming from above, which kind of scares chicks because they're prey, you can come in on multiple sides to grab their feeder or their heat, the, the heater or whatever and make adjustments in the brooder. It's especially nice for cleaning. Um, some of the safety features that I like about this is there is a net, a net material that zips all around the circle um, on top which is really nice because it keeps the chicks who are flying about inside and then it also keeps predators uh, from getting inside of the coop. So if you have a cat or a dog, this is amazing. It helps keep the chicks much, much safer. I also like this for cleaning down at the bottom. I haven't zipped it up. I just kind of laid it in here to, to be able to show you. There's a liner on the bottom and that's really nice for um, keeping everything kind of tidy. I had this on my patio for a while and it kept my patio from getting really gross because it had the liner. Uh, something else that I really liked about this coop because I mentioned how I really like to have lots of space for my chicks so there's none of that pecking behavior. I like to open this side and then I kind of secured this up here and I attached another pin, a large pin around this and it had a top as well. I've also used an extra large dog crate to extend my brooder space. Thanks for watching and good luck with your chicks. Remember, pick the right products for you. Think safety and also consider uh, your budget. And then also consider the right brooder space that's gonna work for you and the number of chicks that you have. Think lots of space and you'll have lots of success. Good luck and don't forget to subscribe to the Head Hen for more chicken education.